Anyway, here's a little piece of a column he wrote about 1983 about his dad. It's called, and then I'm going to do this song about all the louds after it. But his column was called Life With and Without a Father. If I remain still, if I'm alone and silent long enough to hear the sound of my own blood or breathing or digestion above the world of the refrigerator and the rustling of leaves, my father is likely to turn up. He just arrives unbidden in the long-running film of my thoughts, like Hitchcock in his pictures, and he looks for all these 40-plus years of disembodiment, much like himself, big and sandy-haired with freckles on the backs of his hands, perhaps a bit more diffident than the way he holds himself than I remember. He doesn't stay long. And as far as I can tell, his visits have no meaning and no message. Yet even though years of therapy have led me to make the dark, whistling claim that he's finally dead and gone, my father, who died when I was 17, continues to be my principal ghost, a lifelong eminence grise, and only my own end. Will finish it. I've seen the family photos and the man's history. Died in 1942, the age of 43. My grandmother was a widow and my father was a son. Short 